Hello there everybody, Sam Strains here, welcome back to The Railway and welcome back to a very, very different review. Now, today for the first time I think in ever, I'm going to be reviewing a camera. Never done this before on the channel. Anyway, this particular camera is made by a company called Foxeer and it's called the, the Legend 2 Racing Drone UHD camera. And basically Foxeer are a company that specialise in manufacturing cameras for drones, model aircraft, um, aeroplanes, that kind of thing. And of course, the crucial, crucial thing for the camera's design for that sort of application is that they are super, super small and super, super light. Of course, that's super important. I'm saying super a lot for some reason, but it's really important, obviously, for aerodynamics and, uh, you know, to keep the weight down and such. Uh, so obviously, that's a necessity. But that also makes them perfect for model railways because they will fit really, really easily onto coaches and wagons and things, whatever you want. And they'll still be within the loading gauge of your railway and so you can put them on there and they won't damage scenery and things as they go around. So with that in mind, the folks at Fox here got in touch with me and asked if, you know, if they would send me one of these cameras, would I review one for them? And that came along at just the right time, actually, because up until recently, I've been using this camera to do all that sort of thing, the onboard shooting. And this is the Mobius Action Cam, and it was a fantastic camera, really, really good. But the most this can do at 1080p, the highest frame rate, is 30 frames per second. And obviously this year, um, um, yeah, from January onwards, I've been uh, uploading videos in 60 frames per second, which means that every time I decide to do onboard shooting uh, with this camera, you only see it at half the frame rate. So I've been thinking for a long time about getting a higher frame rate little camera um, so that I can upgrade that as well. But uh, no, this came along at just the right time. Um, I looked online at this camera and uh, sure enough, it boasts to do 1080p at 60 frames per second. It also does UHD, which is beyond 1080p, super high resolution at 24 frames per second, I think. And the other interesting one was a super low resolution. It's of quite a low resolution, below 720p at least. And that does a really high frame rate at something like 240 frames per second. And I thought that would be a great way to test some slow motion stuff and you know see what we could do with that. And it also has a, a bunch of other features as well, such as Wi-Fi, which is really impressive, something that the Mobius doesn't have. But uh, the main thing for me was that it did 1080p at 60 frames per second. Now, in reality, unfortunately, this camera in my application does not deliver what it promises um, in here, indoors, on the railway. And I'll talk about why not later on. And it's quite annoying, actually, because I think there is an easy way around it, but uh, I haven't been able to find it. Uh, but first things first, I'm going to get this unboxed and I'm going to show it to you. So here we go. The Fox Ear Legend 2. What an interesting little camera. So, first of all, the first thing to say is a massive thank you to the folks at Fox Ear for letting me have this camera because actually, one of my biggest passions in life, apart from model trains and model railways, of course, is video equipment and cameras and things. So, this is super, super exciting. And I thought before I get started on the unboxing, I would let you know how much this costs. So, this uh, can be bought for $70, which comes out at uh, approximately £50, I think it is. And uh, just for reference, the Mobius here, which actually admittedly has fewer features than this this is actually six pounds more expensive. It, it can be bought on eBay, I believe, for about 56 pounds. Okay, so now that's out of the way, let's take a look at this. It's in this lovely sort of box, quite a good quality box. On the back, you've just got a little bit of information on the camera, but uh, nothing really that interesting to read. So let's get straight to it and see what this thing is like. So if I lift up the top of the box, you've got a little bit of paperwork. This first little card just says, thank you for buying. And this second card, well, a bit of paper, is literally all you get for the instructions. Now normally you would get a link to a PDF for example uh, of, so that you can you know look up a full PDF manual but uh, there isn't a link like that. The only link that is on here, hang on a second where is it, uh, it says www.foxear.com forward slash download it's at the bottom there but that link is broken uh, you go to that link and uh, nothing is on there so I have had a look online for a manual I can find one for the legend one but not for the legend two so how you actually do some of the stuff is a bit of a mystery but luckily I've been able to piece most of it together okay so that's that a little bit of instructions we've got the camera here so I'll get this bit out first it's got this sort of ribbon to make it easier to take out let's take a look at this 
Okay, so yeah, just a ribbon. The camera comes in a little protective bag, which is very nice. And uh, here it is, as you can see. And uh, from the outside, it looks pretty similar to the Mobius in terms of size and that sort of thing. I'll just show you very quickly around. So here on the top, you've got uh, this grill, which is presumably to help cool the thing, because obviously shooting at those high frame rates uh, will cause it to get quite hot. And then of course, you've got the power slash mode button and the recording slash Wi-Fi button on there. On this side, you've got the micro SD card slot. Yes, this shoots to micro SD. And if I just uh, get my nail under here, you can see that there is an SD card in there already. And I've put a, a 16 gig card in there and I'm not going to get it out because actually it catches on the inside of the case. And so I actually have to use a screwdriver to get the thing out. Yes, not too good that, but uh, it works. It does work. Once you've got it in there, you can sort of uh, just connect it via USB. And uh, speaking of the slots, as you can see here, you've got a USB, sort of one of those modern sort of micro USB slots. And then you've also got that micro sort of HDMI thing as well. So it does do HDMI out, which is very nice. The other side, you've got nothing. And on the front there, of course, you've got the, the lens, which is built in. And you've also got slots here, which presumably one of them will be for the microphone. Not too sure what the other one is. I think it might be something to do with adjusting the focus, but obviously I don't have a PDF manual, so I can't guarantee that. And I'm certainly not poking an Allen key into there to find out in case it is something that could be damaged by that. And incidentally, I don't know how you adjust the focus on this. I don't know if it's possible, but again, no manual means I can't find that out. So that's the camera. It's a pretty good quality thing, perhaps not quite as solid as the Mobius was, but uh, certainly pretty good for the money. You know, it is uh, considerably cheaper. So that's the camera. If I bring the box back, we've also got uh, a sort of accessories box, which is quite useful. So uh, let me just open this up and show you what you get inside briefly. So the first thing you get is, I don't know, would you call it a, la a lanyard or something like that? Um, possibly it's a lanyard, I don't know. Anyway, it's got Velcro on it and things. And then you've also got some Velcro sticky pads as well. So if you wanted to attach the camera to your drone or aircraft or something like that, you can use those to do that. But uh, yeah, that's just uh, non-technical stuff. And then in the box, you've also got, oh, it's all come together. You've got this, which is a tripod mount. So the camera clips into this. So let's see if I can do it. I haven't tried this before. Does it slide in? No, it slides in, okay. There we go. So now it's got the screw mount on the bottom so you can put it on your tripod, which is handy. And it slides in and out. That's much better actually than the Mobius, which clips in and out and breaks the clips. <laughs> right, so that's that. Uh, here you have a protective case with some stuff inside it. Hang on, let me get it out. So the protective case is just a rubberized case, which is actually good for protecting the camera. So yeah, I can highly recommend using that. Not so important on railways, of course. Then you've got this super short USB lead, which again has that sort of micro USB connector on it. So you can connect that to your computer or I suppose a power socket. Um, for charging and also data transfer, if you need that. You've also got a lens cap which speaks for itself. Um, it's a little bit of a flimsy lens cap, but it does the job. It clips onto the front of the camera there and protects the lens. But uh, yeah, it's very easy to sort of knock off and lose, I suppose. And then this thing, which appears to go into the HDMI slot, I'm gonna guess. And it's just got um, sort of power connectors on the end. So I'm not sure what that's for. Maybe model aircraft people will know better than I do. But uh, yeah, not, not entirely sure about that. And again, if I had a manual, I'd probably be able to tell you what that is, but I don't, so I can't. Right, so let's power this camera up then and show you what it does. And as I said, yes, this does have Wi-Fi, which is an amazing feature for a camera which is much cheaper than the Mobius. So I'm gonna get this set up and I will show you how it works. All right, so as I suggested earlier on, the camera does actually support Wi-Fi and in fact, Unlike the Mobius, where you plug it into your computer and configure it that way, you actually do all configuration of the camera uh, through your phone or tablet, as, as in this case. So that is quite a nice feature, I think. And I will just say that this is just going to be a demonstration. It's not going to be a tutorial or a user guide, but I will show you very briefly how this thing works. So the first thing you do is turn the camera on, and to do that, we just press the on button for two seconds, hold it down. There we go, that comes on, and that is now ready to record, but because we want to go onto Wi-Fi, we're going to hold down the recording button for a few seconds. And as you can see, that green light comes on, which means it's connected to Wi-Fi. Okay, so now on the iPad, I'm just going to head into the settings and uh, connect that, so I'll be back in a second. Okay, so it's now connected, so if I hit connect device, we should now get a feed from the camera. Hey, there we go, there it is. So this is a live view on the camera, let me wave in front of it. There we go. There is a little bit of a delay on there, but uh, yeah, it does work very nicely. So there you can see is a little bit of the layout. 
And uh, yeah, that works pretty nicely. So if you have got it on a flying machine or something like that, a drone, you could probably use this to help drive it. Although, of course, the small delay will uh, ruin that very slightly. So let me show you some of the settings and talk about some of the stuff I've found with this. So the first thing is you can change all the quality settings. So you've got quality, field of view, looping, stamp, all that good stuff. Um, and here are the different options for the resolution. So at the moment, as you can see, I've got this set to 1080p at 60 frames per second. Now, the really annoying thing is when you set it to this 1080p at 60 frames per second what you should get on the recording is the image refreshing 60 times a second but in, in fact what it really does is it just refreshes 30 times a second and duplicates every frame so it looks like it's doing 60 frames per second now I thought to start with right well that's just them cheating then that's them pretending it's a 60 frames per second camera when it isn't but actually when you take it outside where it's super super well lit you do get the full 60 frames per second. Um, it's just in low light uh, that it won't do it. Now, when I say low light, I mean this room where I film my train videos has got an incredible amount of lighting. It's got LEDs, it's got floodlights, it's got soft boxes, it's got everything. So actually, this room is well lit, but it's not well lit enough to do 60 frames per second. So sure, you know, if you've got a drone or something like that and you're going to be using it outside during the day, by the way, then yes, you'll be able to get that 60 frames per second. But if you want to film indoors as I do then unfortunately it isn't going to do that at 60 frames per second. Now I did find online somebody was talking about a firmware update which actually makes the camera maintain that 60 frames per second even if it is a little bit dark but uh, I've downloaded the firmware put it onto the card as you're supposed to and the camera doesn't update so it doesn't work. So anyway I got in contact with Foxeer the folks at Foxeer and asked them you know is there a firmware update that will work that I can use and they sent me one and it did update hooray but uh, it didn't change anything it still didn't work properly so yeah that kind of sucks so really for my application indoors where where it is well lit but it's not natural light it's not super super bright that doesn't seem to work and that's the same with this one this is the super low resolution 640 by 480 but again at 240 frames per second that one just again does 30 frames per second so it really is pretty poor that is and uh, yeah, and there's the UHD at 2880 times 2160p at 24 frames per second. That does actually seem to be higher resolution than the 1080p. I've compared the two clips, zoomed right in, and there seems to be more definition there. So, you know, at least that is honest, and at least that works. But uh, yeah, that is a little shame. Uh, you've also got a 12 megapixel camera, which uh, I don't know. Well, let's try it. Okay, I think I've just taken a picture with it, so uh, if I have, then uh, yes, hopefully I'll be showing it on the screen right now. So a few other, other settings to go through. As you can see, you have got an ISO limit, so if you don't want your videos to look too grainy, you can set it to 400 or something like that. But uh, I find that uh, just auto does it fine for me. Uh, there's all sorts of different uh, useful settings, actually. White balance, EV comp, contrast and things. It's all good for me. And if we go down here down to the device thing you can see that you've got the firmware version which is still version 1.0 I haven't actually been able to make it change from 1.0 none of the firmware updates I found did that also battery level that's a strange one it's been at 100% ever since I got it and I've done a whole lot of filming with it and it's still at 100% so either either the uh, the battery is ridiculously good on this thing or um, yeah that isn't very accurate and then you've just got uh, this is quite a good setting find camera obviously you're not going to lose it in the railway room but if you're using it on your drone or whatever you can hit the find camera button and uh, it says here I am so that's quite useful is it gonna stop I've got to hit it again <laughs> there we go but it would keep going so anyway let's get this onto the railway then and do a little bit of a comparison between this and the Mobius and I'll show you what I mean so uh, yeah here we go so here we go then with a little bit of a comparison. This is my setup. I'm going to start with the Mobius. And as you can see, I've put it on one of the old sort of triangle uh, low loading wagons. It's got a couple of Lego bricks. Get this. This is real professional stuff. A couple of Lego bricks, blue tack to it with some blue tack on the top. And that just does the job fine. It it just connects the camera onto it there and the camera is good and snug. And of course I've got the little 3F Jinty on the back there. So I'm going to show you some footage from the Mobius first. Let me just turn the camera on. Make sure the lens cap isn't on because that would be a shame. And then I'm just going to start that off recording. So let me just start the Jinty off and then we will cut to footage from the Mobius. 
So here she goes through the scenic part, and as you can see, it doesn't appear too smooth, and that's because the Mobius can only shoot at 30 frames per second at 1080p. So the image quality is pretty good, not bad colour, pretty high contrast, and as you can see, we're focused in quite close to the track in front of us, which uh, leaves quite a realistic effect. But uh, yeah, not a high frame rate, so it doesn't look as smooth and fluid as the rest of the video does. So I'm going to bring that back now, and as you can see now that she's reversing, uh, there's not much motion blur going on there, which suggests quite a high shutter speed, which is pretty good. So, let me bring her back. Okay, so that's the Mobius, and uh, now we will get on to the Fox here, which is the one we're all interested in. I'll stop that recording, switch that off. So, let me uh, bring on the Fox here, switch it on. There we go, and I'm not using the Wi-Fi on this because obviously I've got access to the camera itself. So, let me just hit the record button. There we go, that starts it recording, and uh, now let me, uh, oops, send her forwards through the scenic section. So as you can see from this footage, the contrast isn't quite as good, but the colour is generally better. It seems to capture the colour a lot more faithfully. Now, as you can see, it is focused quite a lot further out than the Mobius was, and that's because it is very difficult to adjust the focus. You can't just... Uh, with the Mobius, you can grab the lens here and turn it to adjust the focus. I can't see a way of doing that with the uh, with the Fox Ear one. And obviously I don't have a manual for it, so I can't find out whether it is possible or not. As you can tell also by the Fox Ear, even though it is set to run in 60 frames per second, it's still only capturing 30 as I mentioned, which means it looks just the same as the Mobius does in terms of the fluidity and such. Now, it's also quite interestingly got a lower video bitrate than the Mobius has. The Mobius was uh, filming at 30 frames per second and it gets around 17 megabits per second, but the Fox Air, even though it's making a 60 frames per second video file, it only films at about 15 megabits per second, which uh, isn't enough really to make much of a difference, but certainly if you're filming something where there's a lot of movement and the camera is flying around a lot, for example, on a drone, then you might see a decrease in quality there, possibly, but certainly on the railway here, where most of the motion is quite slow and minimal, it doesn't make a massive difference. So as I said, yeah, the Fox here will only manage that 60 frames per second in much brighter conditions. For example, the surface of the sun, I don't know. So if you go in there on holiday, yes, take the Fox here. And like I say, there seems to be a firmware update which does correct this issue, but I can't seem to make it work. It doesn't work. So if it does work one day and the folks at Fox here get back to me with something that does work, I'll make another video and explain that. Anyway, let's take a look at the grain. So as you can see, uh, this is the Mobius again. It tends to look a little bit grainy in this situation. It's not absolutely terrible, but obviously you can tell that the ISO setting is quite high there. And similarly with the Fox here, it's still fairly grainy as you can see, quite a bit of video grain going on there, but definitely not as much. So it's clearly probably a better image sensor. Okay, so that's a bit of general performance, but as I said, in this room I've got an awful lot of lighting. I've got floodlights and softboxes, and most people won't have that. So what I'm going to do now is do a bit of a low light test. I'm going to switch off the softboxes and the floodlights and just keep the basic lighting on and see how it looks. And I think that will probably reveal which is the better camera for low light situations. Even though we know that the frame rate will be lower on the Fox Ear. So let's start with the Fox Ear first then. Let's send it round now in the dark. So, the answer is really, they both do quite well at low light. They're both extremely grainy though, which, yeah, suggests that it is being shot at a much higher ISO level. Um, noticeably though, there's much less motion blur with the Mobius at low light, as you can see when I'm reversing it super fast here. It doesn't blur quite so much. Uh, there's quite a bit more blurring with the Fox here, which suggests maybe it's operating at a lower shutter speed. But overall, they are very similar. There's not much difference. But except, of course, the Fox here can't deliver the promised frame rate. So in conclusion then, which of these two cameras is the best and which is better value for money? Well, if you're going to use these for their intended purpose, which is of course to be attached to drones and flown around, uh, then the Fox Ear is definitely the best choice because it does the 60 frames per second if you've got a sunny day and, you know, a place that's well lit. The Mobius still delivers nice quality images, but uh, it can only manage them at 30 frames per second and under no circumstances will it do more, unless you want to set it down to 720p, in which case I think it will do so. In my application, which is indoors filming on railways, the two are much, much closer because in reality the Fox Ear can only do those 30 frames per second videos indoors. And again, if there was a way to update this so that it did do the 60 frames per second indoors and still looked decent, then this would be by far the better choice. But as it stands right now, they both perform pretty much the same as you could tell by the footage. 
However, though, there is quite a bit of difference in the price. Obviously, you can get the Fox Ear for around £6 cheaper than the Mobius, and I would say that the Fox Ear has a lot more features. The Mobius does not support Wi-Fi, whereas the Fox Ear does. It might not be a feature that you use indoors on the railway. It's certainly not something I'm going to be using, but, uh, you know, it's cheaper. You might as well take the feature because it is cool and you can use it for all kinds of uh, fun applications as well, uh, which you can't with the Mobius. And, of course, don't forget that the Fox Ear can also do that UHD, which is high res. Resolution. I can't show that unfortunately because I just render these videos in 1080p so it would just look like 1080p but I have looked at it there isn't a massive improvement by uh, shooting at that higher resolution but it is just a little bit better it isn't simply 1080p that's blown up if you zoom right in on the two different versions you can tell that the UHD is higher resolution and there's more definition there so yeah if sort of uh, 4k and uh, high high definition high resolution video is something you're interested in then I think the legend 2 will do it better Finally, if you want to do slow motion, again, in theory, the Fox Ear Legend 2 will be able to do that for you, but it doesn't work indoors. You still get 30 frames per second indoors. I haven't actually tested that outdoors yet uh, in, you know, where there's loads and loads of light, but uh, I can't seem to make that work indoors. I've shown, I've shown loads and loads of light at the subject and waved my hand under it. Still didn't work. I still only got 30 frames per second. So, yeah, it's a little bit dodgy, but obviously it's clearly designed for outdoor use, and uh, even though they sent it to me to test on the railway, it really isn't designed for for that and so it doesn't do a fantastic job but generally it's the better camera yeah sure it is because it's cheaper they both provide they both produce similar results except the legend 2 is cheaper and you can also use it on your ipad or your iphone or your android or whatever so yeah it's the better camera it is good but it doesn't do what it's supposed to which is a bit of a shame but it's a good camera uh, certainly get yourself one if you've got 50 quid to spare it's a good fun toy to play with so there we go, that is my brief review of the Fox Ear Legend 2. Let me know what you think about it, and also if you know where I can find a decent PDF manual for this camera, uh, do let me know. And also if you know where I can find a firmware that will work for it, uh, also let me know. Uh, don't bother sending me the links to the firmware on the Fox Ear website, or the ones on their Facebook page, because I've tried those, and they don't work with my camera. I don't know whether it's a problem with uh, the design of camera, or whether it's just a problem with my example, but those don't work, so yeah, don't bother sending me those. Uh, but yeah, generally, pretty good camera, and I hope you enjoyed seeing it today. So that's all I've got to say. Thank you all very much for watching, and I will see you soon with some more trains. Hope you enjoyed it for a change, though. All right, cheers, everybody.